Hello, my name is Joel Christ. I'm a developer with Acona Systems, and today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the process of creating user-defined functions, or UDFs, for Excel services. Today we're going to create a UDF assembly in Visual Studio 2005 and deploy it to a SharePoint Server 2007 site. We're going to configure Excel services running on the SharePoint site to work with the UDF assembly, and then we're going to create an Excel workbook that uses the UDFs that we created, and we're going to publish the workbook to Excel services. So we're going to use Visual Studio 2005 to create a class library to hold the code for our UDS. So we're going to come in here and create a new project. We're going to call it sample UDF. And we're going to do it in C Sharp. And it's going to be a class library. Let's say OK. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to add a reference to the Excel services UDF assembly. So we're going to come in here and choose to add a reference. Now I'm actually running Visual Studio today on a machine that doesn't have SharePoint Server installed on it, so I don't have the SharePoint DLLs or assemblies installed locally, so I'm going to have to go browse for them remotely. So I'm going to actually specify the path to a folder out on the server that's running SharePoint Server 2007 and browse for the Excel Services UDF assembly from there. Let's just go ahead and paste that in here and say OK. So what I've got is the machine name on drive C, and I'm looking in the program files, common files, Microsoft shared, web server extensions, 12, ISAPI folder. And that's, again, out on the remote machine. And here I see all the assemblies that are in that folder. And the one I'm looking for for the Excel services UDF assembly is right here. So we're going to grab the Microsoft.Office.Excel.Server.UDF.DLL file and say OK. And then that causes Visual Studio to go ahead and add the reference to the assembly here. So now let's go ahead and paste in some code to actually implement our UDFs. Okay, so let's take a look at what the code's doing. Um, first thing you notice is we've got a using statement here for the Excel um, services UDF namespace. Um, we're doing this so that we can specify these attributes down here without having to use the fully qualified namespace path. And then down here in the code, we go ahead and have our class. And the class is decorated with the UDF class attribute to tell Excel services that it is a UDF class. And then we have two methods inside there, a my double method that takes a double as a parameter, multiplies that parameter times 9, and returns the result as a double. And then there's the return date time today method that just returns today's date. Both methods are decorated with the UDF method attribute. Um, these is, tells Excel services that these methods are UDF methods. And then the return date time today method uses the is volatile property, setting it to true um, to tell Excel services that the return date time today function is a volatile function. So let's go ahead and build the code. And it's successfully built. So the next thing we're going to do is to configure Excel services. So right now we're sitting here in the central administration site application for SharePoint Server 2007. So if we come over here, what we want to do first is to create a trusted location um, for Excel services. So we're going to click on the Shared Services Provider here, link the Shared Services 1 link. And under the Excel Services settings, we're going to choose to create a trusted file location here. So we're going to add a trusted file location. So what we want to do is specify a location that we're going to ultimately upload our workbook to that's going to work with our UDFs. And we're going to tell Excel services that the location that workbook is coming from is trusted. So we want to actually upload our workbook to the document library here on our SharePoint site. So right now I'm in the document library. So I can grab the URL from that right here. Come back over here and paste that in. I'm going to specify that it's a Windows SharePoint Services location type. We want to trust children. Come all the way down here. We want to make sure that we say that we want to allow user-defined functions to be used from workbooks in that location and say OK. Now the next thing we're going to do is go back over here and choose to add our user-defined function assembly so Excel Services knows about it. So we're going to go ahead and click here. Now I've gone ahead and uploaded the uh, assembly DLL to a folder here on the server. And I've done it before as part of my testing, so it remembers that. I'm going to go ahead and select that location. And I'm going to specify that it's a file path. Now this may seem kind of strange and may not like it may not work in all situations. For example, when you have a server farm environment with multiple machines um, and the assembly, um, the DLL sitting on this one machine in this folder, um, what you would do in that case there if you wanted to use a file path assembly location 
is to create a SharePoint Services solution package and then use that to deploy the UDF assembly to each server machine. Um, you can get more information about creating a SharePoint Services location or SharePoint Services solution package um, from an article on MSDN that's titled How to Deploy UDFs Using Windows SharePoint Services Solutions. And there's a link to that article in the written material that accompanies this video with this how to. And then the last thing we want to do is make sure that we have the assembly enabled down here in Excel Services. And we'll say OK. So at this point here, we've created a trusted location, and we've uploaded and uh, registered our UDF assembly with Excel services. So the next thing we need to do is to create an Excel workbook here that calls our UDFs. So I've already got one that I've created, um, and I've gone ahead and added a call in cell A1 to the my double function, and it takes a single parameter of type double, and we're specifying that that value is going to come from cell B1, and we're giving it an initial value of 8. Um, in cell A2, we make a call to the return date time today method. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and format, make sure this is formatted as a date format. It is. Okay. So when we look at our result here um, in Excel services, we'll actually see our result returned as a date. Now you'll notice that um, right now Excel is returning the name error um, for our cells here where we're calling our UDS. That's because Excel running here on the desktop is not able to resolve those names to our UDFs. When we deploy this thing to Excel services running on the server, um, it'll work fine and we'll actually see the results here in these cells from our method calls. Um, for, uh, for more information on how to create UDFs or UDF solutions that can be run on both the client and the server, there's an MSDN article you can refer to titled Developing User-Defined Functions for Excel 2007 and Excel Services. And there's a link to that article, again, in the written material that accompanies this video with this how-to. So again, in cell B1, we're specifying our input value um, to the my double function. The last thing we need to do here is we need to specify a named range for this cell um, so that we can publish this thing to Excel services. So let's come in here, select the cell, choose to define a name. We're going to call it my double param. We're going to say OK. Go ahead and save that. So now at this point here, we're ready to go ahead and publish the workbook to Excel services. Okay, so we want to specify the URL to our document library up on our SharePoint site. So let's go grab that again. Oops, grab the whole thing. Okay. And we want to also then make sure that we publish that named range that we created for the cell that holds the parameter value or the value for our my, my double UDF function. So the way we do that is to come in here under the Excel services options click on the parameters tab and choose to add a parameter and we're going to select that name range that we created and say OK, OK. And then the other thing to notice is that we have the open in Excel services checkbox checked and that'll cause the workbook then to be opened in Excel um, web access once we publish it to um, Excel services. So let's go ahead and then click on save to actually publish the workbook. OK, now yes, we want to go ahead and check it in to make it visible. And now it's coming up in Excel Web Access. And now we see our workbook. And we see in cell A1, our call to our my double UDF. It's taken an input value of 8, multiplying it by 9, and given us 72. That's correct. Let's change it. Since we published that named range for the cell that contains our input parameter here as my double, we can now come over and specify a new value for that parameter. And we're going to click Apply to recalculate. And now it does 3 times 9 and gives us 27. So that's working correctly. And then in cell A2, we have um, the return value um, from the return date time today um, UDF. And that's returning today's date. So it looks like everything's working correctly. So by creating a UDF assembly in Visual Studio, deploying the assembly to a SharePoint Server 2007 site, and then configuring Excel services to allow our UDF assembly to be used, we were able to create and publish an Excel workbook that used the Excel services UDF support to call our UDFs.